Well, hello there, Compass Kids. I am so happy to be here with you today to tell you a Bible story for this week. Now, if you don't know me, let me tell you a little about myself. I am Miss Sarah, and I am from the Compass Kids Winchester campus. So, you may know me, may not, but I am super excited to be here with you today, all right? I don't know about you, but I have really missed Compass Kids, so I'm super excited to hear a lesson today. All right, so now the first thing we need to do before we hear about our lesson is, you probably know it if you've watched some of these video lessons before, we need to get our materials, our supplies, right? Okay, so I'm going to tell you what you need, and then you're going to pause this and go get everything so it'll be all ready. Okay, so let's hear what we need today. Ready? Keep these things in mind so you know what to go get. You're going to get three things today. Here's number one. The most important thing you're going to need. What do you think that might be? A Bible, right? Most important thing you're going to need. So one is Bible. There's one. Next thing you're going to need is a journal. Now, I know on some of these video lessons, some of your teachers have had you get a journal to write things in, to keep things in, okay? So if you've started one of those, great, grab that. If not, grab any journal in your house. My journal I'm gonna to use today looks like this. Maybe you have a line journal from school. Maybe you just have pieces of paper you could staple them together, however you want, but you're gonna need something to write on like a journal, okay? And then the third thing you're gonna need is something to write with. So if we're going to be writing in a journal, then we need to write with something, right? You choose whatever you want. I'm going to use a marker today, but you could use a pencil, pen, crayon, whatever you want. Okay, so three things. Let's review them. Okay, number one is Bible. Number two, journal. Number three, something to write with. Okay, Bible, journal, something to write with. Go get those three things, okay? Pause it and go get it, go. All right, friend, you got all your supplies? Okay, so before we jump in with our rival story, we are gonna play a little game, okay? Is that okay with you? All right, let's start with a little game. So if you haven't already, you can put your supplies down. You see I don't have them in my hand. You don't need them right now. You're going to need to move around a little, so make sure you've got just a little bit of space. All right, now we're going to do a following game today, okay? So I'm going to lead you in some motions, and you do the exact same thing I do. But you have to keep your eyes closed the whole time. No peeking, no opening them for a little bit. Your eyes have to be closed the whole time. All right, so close your eyes. Really close your eyes. Now do exactly what I do. Keep your eyes closed the whole time, okay? Do what I do. Hey, wait, why are you not doing what I do? Okay, so with your eyes closed, you had no idea what I was doing. Hmm. Let's try this a different way, okay? Try another way. Now, you still got to keep your eyes closed, though, okay? So close your eyes if they're not closed right now. Yeah, close your eyes. I'll do exactly what I do. Jump one time. Wave your hands in the air. Spin around in a circle. Kick one foot. All right, now you can open your eyes. Okay, now which way was easier? Was it easier to follow me the first time or the second time? So the second time was a lot easier, huh? Why? Okay, so even though your eyes were still closed, you still couldn't see me. You could hear me. Right? 
I was giving directions out loud. Okay, so in our Bible story today, we are going to learn about a group of people in the Bible who weren't doing what they were supposed to. Okay, they weren't following God's rules for them. They weren't living the way God wanted them to. But that was because they didn't know how. Okay, so if you think about our game, you didn't follow me. You didn't follow what you were supposed to do in the beginning because you didn't know how. You couldn't hear me. You couldn't see me. Didn't know how, right? So then later, the group of people in the Bible we're going to hear about, they discovered God's word. Then they knew, oh, this is how we're supposed to live our lives. That's kind of like how in our game, the second time you could hear me, right? I was giving you directions. You knew what to do. Okay, so we're going to hear about some people today who finally figure out what to do. They learn what God wants them to do. So our main Bible point for today is, I'm going to show it to you, God's Word changes our lives. Okay, so I want you to say that with me because we're going to say it a lot. That's what I want you to remember, okay? So whenever I go like this, you can tap your head like this too. Tell yourself, this is what I'm remembering today. This is my main Bible point. Okay, so God's word changes our lives, All right? Okay, so now we are going to read about that in God's word. Did you know that you can read God's word? You can read what he says? Where do you read that at? In the Bible, right? This is God's Word, right here. So, we are going to open up and look in the book of Second Chronicles. I want you to think, is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? Second Chronicles. It's in the Old Testament, okay? So that means it's before Jesus time. So, 2 Chronicles and chapter 34. So when you get to 2 Chronicles, chapter 34, the big 34, okay? So, turn in your Bible, 2 Chronicles chapter 34. Get your Bible ready. All right, you got it? If not, you can always pause this video if you ever need more time, okay? If I ever go too fast, pause it. Take some more time. So, we are going to hear all about a guy named Josiah. So, that's our main character today, Josiah. Now, right when I look in this chapter, I see something fascinating. So, let me tell you a super cool fact about Josiah. Are you ready? This might blow your mind. Blew my mind when I read it. It says that Josiah became a king when he was only eight years old. Eight! Not a grown-up like me. Eight years old. How old are you? So you're kind of close to that, right? It's about your age. He became a king when he was about your age. Isn't that surprising? I thought so, too. All right, so Josiah becomes a king when he is just eight years old, okay? So let me show you a picture of Josiah so you can get it. So here we've got our king, Josiah, okay? We'll see what this is later on, all right? So we've got King Josiah. Now, during some of this story, we may do a little bit of acting out. So sometimes you might be looking in your Bibles and sometimes you might use your hands to kind of act some things out to help us remember, okay? So Josiah was a king. So I want you to pretend you're putting on a nice crown like you're a king. I've got my crown on. Got yours on? Okay, so Josiah was a king. Even at that young age, he wanted to follow God. He wanted to do the right thing. That was how he wanted to live, okay? He wanted to live his life in a way that would please God, okay? But... Not everyone in his country did that, okay? So when Josiah was about 20, he got rid of all of the idols in his country. 
Raise your hand if you have ever heard of that word, an idol. Okay, so idols in the Bible were like these statues that people made. Okay, they made these statues to be like gods. Okay, they thought, I'm going to make this statue out of stone. It's going to be a god. Now think about that. Does that make much sense to you? If you build something out of stone or brick or whatever, is it going to act like a god? Is it going to be able to do all kinds of things? No. There's only one true God. Who is that? Right? That's our God, right? Your God, my God. There's only one. Okay? So, Josiah was not happy with his people. He was upset that they were doing this. And so, he had people tear him down. Okay? So, we're going to pretend that there's some idols around you, and I want you to knock them down. Yep. Pretending we're not really knocking anything down, but you're going to pretend. Ready? Knock those things down. Knock those idols down. All right, so the people were told to knock them down. Okay? A while later, Josiah decided to rebuild the temple of the Lord. Okay, so he wants to rebuild this temple where the Lord was. So he sent some of his people that he trusted to rebuild it. Okay? So now I want you to pretend that you're building. You're building up a temple. You're building a building, okay? If you've got blocks near you, maybe you've got toy blocks or Legos, you could really pause this video and build it if you wanted to. So right now, pretend to build. Build from the ground up. All right, so they were going to rebuild. Now, let's read a little more. So I am still in chapter 34, and I'm on verse 10. So find verse 10 in your Bible. It says, Then they entrusted it to the men appointed to supervise the work on the Lord's temple. These men paid the workers who repaired and restored the temple. Okay, so they had some money for supplies and money to pay the builders. Okay, so they had to give out money for the supplies and for the workers. Okay, so I want you to pretend you've got some money. You're paying them. All right, so they rebuilt the temple, right? And as they were rebuilding it, they found something amazing. Do you have any guess what they found when they were rebuilding this temple? They actually found God's word, okay? You have something that has God's word in it. What is that? It's your Bible, right? Hold that thing up. It's important. Hold it up high. Okay, so they found God's word. All right? So, they found this. All right? So, let's see what they do next. And then verses 14 and 15. So, you can turn your Bible. Verse 14. While they were bringing out the money that had been taken into the temple of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord that had been given through Moses. So they found God's word. Hilkiah said to Shaphan, the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan. I don't know about you, but if I found something like that, some paper or a book, and it was from what God said, I'd be pretty surprised, right? Like, that would be a pretty cool thing to find. So, they got it, gave it to the secretary, right? And so they're going to give it to Josiah and tell him about it. So let's read a little more and find out what Josiah said, okay? So I want to look at verse 18 and 19. Then Shaphan the secretary informed the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. Who's the king they're talking about? Josiah, right? Okay. When the king heard the words of the law, law he tore his robes. Hmm. Now that's really interesting to me. He tore his clothes when he heard it. Okay, so let's talk and think about this for a minute. So he tore his robes because he was upset, okay? So let me tell you why he's so upset. 
because as soon as he heard God's word, he realized, these people in my land are so not doing that. They're not following God's word, okay? So it made him really upset, and he tore his clothes because he was so upset, okay? So, now, he decides that he is going to read God's word to the people, okay? So that they would hear it for themselves, all right? So, let's look back at the poster I had earlier. So we have Josiah. This is God's word that they found in the temple. What we use now is kind of like a book, but theirs was like a scroll, it's like a roll of paper. And so he was reading it to them, okay? Now, when they heard God's word, Josiah decided that he really wanted to follow it, right? Even at a young age, he's always wanted to follow it. So he was like, yeah, I found God's word. Now I know exactly what to do. And the people did too, okay? So even they changed their lives, and was like, we're going to follow this from now on. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to do that too. I want to follow God's word too. Do you? Okay, so before we go any further, let's stop right there. Let's take a minute and let's pray to God about that. Okay? About wanting to follow his word. So, I'm going to pray out loud first. And if you want to follow his word, and live the way he wants you to. Then I want you to say it out loud too after me. Okay, ready? Okay, close your eyes, let's pray together. God, thank you for sending us your words so that we know how to live. I want to live out your words, so I'm gonna try to do that every day. Amen. All right, so. Now, we have something where we can live his word, right? The Bible. So we're going to try to do that. Now, remember that because we're going to use that for our weekly challenge in a minute. Okay, so we found out that Josiah and his people have now found out what God wants them to do, how he wants them to live, and they're going to change their lives, right? Do you remember today's Bible point? God's word changes our lives. You say that. God's word changes our lives. All right, so let's do some response time. Now, if you don't remember what response time is, another thing we call it is going dark. Okay, so this is a time where we talk to God, and we don't just talk. We also listen, okay? So we are going to talk to God for a little bit and listen. Hear what he has to say. Did you know that you can talk to God and he hears you? Absolutely. Did you know that he talks to you and you can hear it? Absolutely. Now there may be different ways that you hear from God. Maybe you actually hear something like a voice. Or maybe he changes a thought for you in your mind. Maybe he gives you a picture of something in your mind that you can see, or maybe even a smell. There are all different ways he may talk to you. So, we are going to go dark, okay? I'm going to turn the lights out for a minute, and you're going to ask God a question and then listen. So here's the question I want you to ask God today. We've been talking all about his word and living the right way, okay? So you're going to ask God this question. God, how do you want to change me through your word? Okay? So you're asking him, how do you want to change me through your word, through the Bible? Okay? So tell me, what's your question that you're going to ask? God, how do you want to change me through your word? Right? So he might tell you a specific way he wants to change you, something different he wants to do in you. Maybe a way that you need to be reading God's word. Okay, so we're going to go dark. So if you're not at a comfy place in, in the room that you're in, then move to a comfy spot so that you're not touching anything or anyone around you, if you're with brothers or sisters, whatever. So let's go dark. 
for a minute, okay? Close your eyes and talk to God. Right now, if you heard anything during your response time, I want you to tell someone in your family what you heard. Whether he gave you a picture, maybe, or changed a thought, okay? Whatever it was, I want you to tell someone. You may also want to write or draw that in your journal, okay? All right, now, let's talk about our Bible verse. So, our Bible verse today is... Obviously, it's in the Bible. It's in God's Word. And it's also about God's Word. It's kind of cool, right? You're reading in the Bible about the Bible. So, we are looking in 2 Timothy chapter 3. All right? Now, is this one in the Old Testament or the New Testament? New Testament. So, 2 Timothy chapter 3. That's where you're going to look. And I've got it written for you. Yes, let me show you. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 through 17. All right? So turn to that verse and let's see what it says. I'm going to find it in my Bible too with you. All right, you got it? Okay, let's read it together. Got it? I'm almost there. All right, so our Bible verse for today in verse 16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Well, that was kind of long, so let's talk what does all that mean, okay? So it's talking about scripture. Scripture is the Bible, God's word, okay? Those are different words that mean the same thing, all right? So this, this is what we're talking about right here. So it says it is God-breathed, and that means even though people actually wrote it, he's the one who gave the directions. This comes from God. God told them what to write, okay? So that's why we call it God's Word. So this is what he said. And it says that it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that means it teaches us how to live the right way, how to live a way that God wants us to live, okay? So it's telling us that the Bible is all about how God wants us to live. We can use this. Okay, so we're going to look at that and one more time. I want you to close your Bible. We're going to do a sword race and find that verse one more time. Okay, here's what it looks like. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Okay, go find it. Right now, once you've got it, I want you to pause and write that in your journal, okay? So pause the video and write the verse in your journal. All right, now, one last thing before I go, one last thing. I'm going to give you a weekly challenge, okay? So I know some of your teachers have given you a challenge. So here is my challenge for you. You ready for it? Oh, I knew you would be. So, we have talked all about God's Word today, right? All about the Bible, the most important book we have. 
So I want you to really get in the Bible and God's word this week. So my challenge is for you to read at least one chapter in any book. Now I'm telling you one because you're going to do something with that one, but I know you're going to end up reading more chapters than that. So you're going to read anywhere in the Bible, anywhere. You want to start in the beginning, read about how God made the earth in Genesis. You could do that. You want to read about Jesus time in the New Testament. You can do that. If you want to read more about Josiah, like we had today in second Chronicles, you can do that. You choose. Maybe you want to ask someone at home, like an adult and say, Hey, it's one of your favorite books of the Bible. Anywhere you want. And you're going to do something with it. Okay. So you can choose where you're going to read in the Bible and what to do with it. You can do anything, but you're going to show what happened in it, in that part of God's word and what God's teaching you. So here's some ideas. Okay. You can do any way you want, but here's some ideas. Maybe you write some things down if you like to write. Maybe you draw a picture if you like to draw something paint something or do it outside with chalk on the sidewalk. Maybe you're into music and you want to write a song about it. Maybe you even want to take a device like a phone or a tablet and maybe you want to like type out what it's like on there but using emojis. You do whatever you want. So you're going to choose at least one chapter. I know you're going to read more than that. I know you are. But at least one of those chapters, do something with it. Whether you write about it, make a song about it, draw about it, however, but you're gonna show what God is teaching us in that, okay? So that's a fun, creative way. And I want you to show it to someone else. Maybe it's someone in your family, but maybe you send it to a friend. Maybe you tell a grandparent over the phone, whatever, but I want you to share that with someone. Teach someone else what you learned, okay? So I hope you have fun with that challenge. Most importantly, get in God's word and learn something he wants you to know. All right? Okay, get in there. You will find all kinds of wonderful things. Have a great week, Compass Kids.